With each new Fortnite season, okay, a new set of challenges arise, constant patches, meta changes, and players getting better every single day. Sometimes it's really hard to decide like which skills you need to hone in on and improve for each season and meta, right? With the recent arrival of Chapter 2 Season 4, there's a brand new set of challenges to conquer and new areas to improve on. If you focus on these tips throughout this season, guys, you're going to instantly put yourself at an advantage in upcoming tournaments. I promise you. What's going on, guys? This is not your ordinary guy. No, this is your motivation guy. I was born to motivate you to not just be ordinary, but to be extraordinary, man, to be great, not only in this game, but also in life. So today, we're going to be showing you five tips to instantly make you better. These include when you should be taking fights, variable evaluation, capitalizing on mistakes of opponents, dictating fight pace, and staying composed. Okay, so with the recent launch of Season 4, mastering these upcoming techniques is getting harder and harder each and every day with these new patches. And that's why ProGuys.com has the best coaches to help you master each of these skills. We have implemented a new VOD replay analysis system where you can submit your own replays and have them analyzed. Yeah, I just said it. Like, let us do the work for you. ProGuys coaches allow you to become the best, the fastest. Check us out in the link description below for more information. Bunch of crunch, Charmy. Where you at? Say it with me. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch army. And let's get this going. Fighting in Fortnite is very subjective, with modern tournament formats being very rewarding to players that consistently are surviving late into games. There really isn't a super good time to fight. Like, with that being said, let's identify the best times throughout a tournament to fight. One of those times is when you know you won't be able to play all of your games out. If you're a very experienced player and are constantly making it to the end game in a majority of your games, you're gonna have games left over. It's very beneficial to you to like really try and use a couple of these games to rack up some kill points in a short amount of time Time so you don't miss out on any points. Any game that you don't play is leaving potential points off the board. Another prime time to fight is when you're in low elo lobbies. In these tournaments, like it is skill-based matchmaking, meaning you'll be constantly playing against players with a similar point value. In the first couple of games, specifically your first game, there is a very broad range of players from a variety of skill levels. A very common strategy in your first game or two is to fight more often because the risk is lowered due to the average skill of the player being so low. Other aspects to consider when deciding to take a fight are your strengths and pain. All right, for example, like if you would consider yourself a very good fighter, you might elect to take more fights than someone who isn't as confident fighting. There is some self-reflection to be done when deciding to take a fight or not. Secondly, you have to consider your ping. Those that are unfamiliar with ping, okay, it's essentially your latency to the server or how fast your input registers in the server. Being at a lower ping puts you at a significant advantage in fights. So with this in mind, a lower ping player can get away with fighting more often because they have an instant advantage versus a high ping player who's at an instant disadvantage. So the final aspect to consider when deciding to take a fight is your in-game environment. The term environment in Fortnite can be very subjective, but in this case, guys, Guys, it's going to be referring to the location of the zone, right? Surrounding players and surrounding terrain. A good time not to take a fight is when you have a long time to rotate. If you have a long rotate, any time spent fighting, it's time that you should be used to advance on the map or get better positioning. All right, so next up, we have surrounding players. If you are in a high density part of the zone, you should not be taking a fight because high density indicates that there is a high quantity of players in that area. A high quantity of players means there's a high chance you're gonna get third partied in a fight, which is never good. <laughs> Lastly, all right, we have terrain. It's common knowledge that having high ground is an advantage in Fortnite. This means you shouldn't take a fight where you are immediately giving your opponent high ground. Avoiding taking fights where your opponent has natural height by using terrain. You can also use terrain to your advantage, meaning that it would be beneficial for you to take a fight when you are on natural height and your opponent is on natural low ground. All right, so the second tip is very much related to the first tip. Once you decide that you want to fight, you must dictate the pace of that fight. This means don't allow your opponent to get comfortable. If your opponent is trying to play slow, play fast with a speedy fast play style. If he's trying to play fast on you, all right, all right, make an adjustment, slow down, and just wait for an opportunity to make an edit play. We see a good example of this from Mongrel. Okay, so in this clip, we see Mongrel getting pressured in the zone. At this point in time, his opponent and him are both stationary with his opponent occupying height 
and Mongrel on low ground. Mongrel is the first person in the fight to set the pace. He pops two minis and begins to immediately take height very quickly. This fast-paced play obviously makes his opponent uncomfortable because he begins to scramble to maintain height. Once Mongo gets on the same layer as his opponent, he places a wall and he makes an edit play dealing a 33 damage shot to his opponent. At this point, all right, he knows that his opponent still has shield, but is taking storm damage due to his fight occurring in the storm. His opponent doesn't match Mongrel's fast-paced playstyle and loses height. Mongrel then predicts his opponent's edit and lands a 154 damage dealing pre-fire, effectively eliminating his opponent. Mongrel won this fight because he dictated the pace of the fight and was able to overwhelm his opponent with pressure. You want to be the comfortable one, all right? Allow him to make the mistake and don't get overwhelmed, guys. Your goal should be to make him uncomfortable in the fight. When your opponent is uncomfortable, whew, you're not only dictating the fight, but you're putting yourself in an advantage. Okay, guys, so next up, we have variable evaluation. The variable evaluation is defined as your ability to interpret your in-game surroundings. As discussed in When to Take Fights, variable evaluation plays a huge role in how well you do in tournaments. Having the ability to properly evaluate variables such as where players are on the map and how you can you know, use your loadout to your advantage and how you should rotate with your current inventory are all skills that you must master to become a top player. All right, so the first key variable to evaluate is where players are on the map. This is better known as zone density. Your ability to evaluate zone density is a direct result of how good of a rotator you are. The better rotator you are, the longer you're gonna last in games. Therefore, getting more placement points and placing better in the tournament. You can evaluate zone densities by advancing your understanding of what parts of the zone do a majority of the players usually rotate into if the players are evenly distributed at the beginning of the game for that particular zone. All right, so next, evaluating your loadout for situational play or, in better words, using your loadout to your advantage. This concept is pretty straightforward. All right, so when in a game of competitive Fortnite, most players elect to carry two to three weapons. What weapons you have in your inventory should directly affect how you should not only take fights, but how you should play the entire game with that specific inventory. For example, if you're in a game that Storm Surge is a factor and you're carrying a sniper, you can distance yourself from players knowing you have a form of long-range weapon weaponry that you can effectively get tags in you know from a long distance if you're not carrying a sniper you're going to have to shorten that distance between you and other players to use your ar to get tags finally evaluating your inventory to rotate efficiently and effectively all right fortnite has a ton of items that can be used to put yourself at an advantage when rotating throughout the game your ability to house these rotational items in your inventory and then use them to your advantage is an essential part of becoming a top player a good example of this is how you use your movement all right if you typically carry double movement in your inventory how do you use each item to rotate all right, let's just say, for example, you have crash pads and peppers. You would want to use peppers in early zones to rotate because they're not as viable as crash pads in later, smaller zones. Some of the best players in the world are the best at evaluating these variables. Want to know the fastest way to improve on your variable evaluation? Head on over to ProGuides.com. ProGuides has the best coaches, guys, like that can really help you get to where you need to be fast. Check out the descriptions below and sign up for a VOD review session with the pro coach today. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. <laughs> Another especially important area is your ability to capitalize on an opponent's mistake, huge. Capitalizing on an opponent's mistakes can really mean a lot of things, but in this video, all right, we're gonna be specifically covering the most important mistake to capitalize on. These mistakes are opponents poor loot paths, not utilizing natural height, and not fully covering themselves late game. All right, so the first common mistake is cutting off an opposing player's loot when they take a poor loot path. In many cases, you're gonna find yourself or a team landing POIs, you know, around the map. A majority of the time, these POIs are contested by other players or teams. One mistake players often make is using a loot path that can easily be cut off by other players, therefore giving themselves less map to loot. This is something that, you know, as a player, you need to be looking for. If you have an opportunity to limit an opponent's loot, you gotta take it. Next, you have to utilize natural hype. It's already been established that having height is an advantage, right? So you gotta use it, man. When rotating, you should be generally be staying on high elevation if possible. If you catch a team occupying a lower elevation, you need to use that opportunity to pressure them, either getting storm search tags or potentially getting them map focused. 
All right, so the final major mistake that we're gonna be covering is players not fully covering themselves late game. When rotating late game, a large number of players are smashed into a super contested zone and layers of players stacked on top of each other begin to form. When this happens, you will very commonly see players occupying the same layer rotating directly above or below other players. Due to the high quantity of builds, players often become unaware of what builds are truly theirs. This leads to many opportunities to kill players that are unaware you haven't edited on them. If you are someone who is familiar with the competitive Fortnite scene, all right, probably know the pro player from BBG, Bucky. Bucky's one of the best players in the world at capitalizing on this specific mistake. In this clip, we see Bucky see a potential opportunity to rack up a ton of eliminations for his team simply because of how aware he is of his surrounding builds. When players make this mistake of running next to one of Bucky's walls, <laughs> they are met with a quick edit and a heavy damage dealing pump shot. Bucky provides his team with a ton of mature refreshes by capitalizing on this mistake, which in turn leads to them winning this game with a hefty amount of kills. All right, so the final tip that will instantly make you better is staying composed throughout tournaments. Whew. Easier said than done, man, really is. Fortnite is a fast-paced, hectic, and RNG-filled game. Overall, competitive Fortnite can be a very stressful game. A major aspect of Fortnite really is the mental side. Your ability to stay at a mental equilibrium you know, is essential to your success. Mental equilibrium is the ability to maintain a steady, controlled train of thought throughout, not only for that game, but the entire tournament. This means not changing your play style because you're overly angry or you're overly confident. So you wanna stay somewhere in between, all right? The best way to work on this really is to identify areas of your gameplay that cause you to get overly angry or <laughs> overly excited. For instance, like if you get headshot sniped and that typically makes you angry, all right? It sure does for myself. <laughs> Work on suppressing those emotions to make sure that they don't affect your game plan in the next game, guys. On the other side of things, like if your gameplay is affected by getting big impact frags, work on suppressing those emotions so you can stay focused and continue dominating that game and tournament, not to get overly excited, all right? Let's recap. When we talk about when to take fights, always consider your surroundings, inventory, third parties, and many other factors. All right, guys, make sure you're keeping track of time. Some fights stretch out too long and really can just make it more of a riskier fight. Also, make sure that you are controlling the fight, but playing it smartly. You know, many people either rush too aggressively or just take it way too slow. All right, always consider all the variables, whether it may seem as insignificant as your ping, you know, your mat count, or even how many bullets you have, every little thing counts. Always, always look for openings in your opponent's plays, all right? One common mistake a lot of WQers do is they don't properly evaluate all the details and really you could just usually find an area to exploit. All right, the next thing, staying composed and calm is the best way to be successful in this game. All right, guys, once again, yo, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Man, I'm so pumped up as always because I really want to see you guys succeed. I really, really do. Love you guys. I'm rooting for you guys. I am your number one fan. Don't ever forget that. Connect with me on my Insta at your motivation guy. So, in this video, I showed you five tips that will instantly make you better at Fortnite. By mastering these techniques, you're going to surely find yourself rising on the leaderboard in upcoming events. Which tip did you find most helpful? Hey, let us know in the comments below what you think if you enjoyed the video drop a like and don't forget to sub with notifications on so you're not going to miss a video also at 1 million we are releasing my story of your motivation guy on how i made it to where i am today bunch of crunch army where you at keep eating that bunch of crunch and let's get this going